This is Tibet. The way of life, our people. And here it is on a map, the original Tibet. Known as the rooftop of the world, the Tibetan plateau serves water to almost two billion people in this planet. This is Tibet, my homeland. Every Tibetan born after 1959 is born an activist. 1959, because that is the year the Chinese government occupied my country, killing over a million people, destroying our homes and thousands of monasteries. A tragedy that led to the exodus of my people, walking on foot over the Himalayas into Nepal, then India, following our spiritual leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, into exile. Among the 80,000 that did, there were also my grandparents. So, for me, I was born near a refugee settlement camp in South India. Until I was 11 years old and moved to Toronto, I had not a passport but an identity certificate that was issued by the Indian government, which I needed to renew every single year to maintain my precarious political existence as a person with no homeland. So in short, stateless. A stateless being who yearned but could not go home. And for the ones that are born inside Tibet, they're born into an open-air prison where the walls are only caving further and further in. According to Freedom House, Tibet has consecutively been ranked the least free place on earth. And this year, it's tied with Syria and South Sudan, a place where holding a picture of the Dalai Lama is banned. Having the Tibetan national flag could get you in prison or even cost you your life. That is the situation inside of Tibet. And every day, our Tibetan identity is under attack. The culture, our nomadic way of life, and even our language. You see, culture is the way of life of an entire society the collective programming of the mind that guides the collective community's actions, thoughts, and feelings. It's what makes us unique, human. And that's exactly what the Chinese government is now hell-bent on eradicating. After destroying our environment, relocating millions of Tibetan nomads from their ancestral lands into concrete blocks, the Chinese government has realized that the violence, the re-education camps, the destruction of our environment, the forced sterilization of our women, torture of political prisoners is not working on us because the Tibetans continue to rise. So much that until today, since 2009, 159 Tibetans have self-immolated themselves. Self-immolation, the act of burning oneself on fire, not causing anyone else harm but themselves. A protest, an outcry for the international world, for all of you to hear their message, calling for two things. One, the return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama back into his homeland, and two, freedom. Thousands of protests are constantly happening all across Tibet, but you don't hear about it. Why is that? It's because Tibet has been on lockdown by design. And now, an attack on our language. Tibet Action Institute recently re released a report that said 800,000 Tibetan children are in colonial state-run boarding schools. You see, this is just another tactic that the Chinese government is using, a duplicate from the How to Commit a Genocide playbook. But they're hiding something. They're hiding a hidden policy that mandates even children younger, preschool boarding. That means 
four, five-year-olds are being stripped away from their parents, forced or coerced into attending these colonial state-run boarding schools where they're taught to speak, read, write, and even think and dream in Chinese Mandarin instead of Tibetan. Educational sociologist Dr. Gyalo has seen this firsthand with his own grandnieces. He said that they're acting as strangers in their own homes. After they come back from these schools, these children are staying away from their family. No hugging, no kissing. They don't want to talk to their grandparents. They're talking amongst themselves in Mandarin and zero Tibetan within three months. He estimated that there are at least 100,000 Tibetan children, four and five-year-olds across Tibet in these preschool boarding. That brings our total to one million Tibetan children in colonial state-run boarding schools. That's 80% of our next generation whose identity is being completely eradicated. That insidious transformation of our next generation is exactly what the Chinese government is banking on to complete their cradle-to-grave project, an assimilationist agenda to completely eradicate our Tibetan identity. You know, the very identity that for me, growing up in exile, I couldn't make sense, although I was very proud to be a Tibetan. I didn't have the words to explain what Tibet, my homeland, is. I mean, take a look at this beauty. How would you be able to explain the word without experiencing this air yourself? Thanks to the elders, the ancestors, and our community that worked so hard and sacrificed everything they had to build and invest for the next generation, people like me are able to grow up asking the questions. Questions of why. Why am I stateless? Why can't my people go back home and continue to fight to answer how we're going to return? Today is actually March 10th, the National Uprising Day of my people. Every year, we hit every corner of the world, the streets, protesting which began in 1959 outside of Lhasa, the capital city of Tibet, where hundreds and thousands of Tibetans rose, holding hands, swearing to protect and not backing down. This is the spirit that is inside of me here today with you. It's a constant reminder for me of our responsibility and duty that we all have to make sure that we fight for a freer world. You see, when we come together and we organize, we win. There are victories, whether it is boycotts or sanctions. And here is a recent victory. UN committee released a statement calling for immediate, the immediate abolishment of the coerced residential schools inside of Tibet. But this is just the beginning. There is so much more work left for us to do. Usually on March 10th, I mean, this is actually probably the first March 10th since I can ever remember that I'm missing. I'm not on the streets with a megaphone screaming at the top of my lungs saying, free Tibet, Tibet belongs to Tibetans. Because I wanted to be here in Guatemala City with you all to share the message of my homeland and ask for your solidarity. So, will you join me in saying some of the slogans I probably would have been with in Toronto? Yeah? Can you say it with me? Free Tibet! Free Tibet! Free Tibet! And Tibet belongs to Tibetans! Tibet belongs to Tibet! belongs to? You see, the rise of autocracies today is only possible because of the intricate web of oppression connection that they have. So it is ever more crucial that we, the people, stay united. And we stay united 
Because when we are united, you know, we'll never be defeated. Say with me. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people will never be. I heard you have this in Spanish. Help me. El puedo. Unido. El puedo. Unido. El puedo. Unido. Muchas gracias, everybody. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you.